Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in 1990, science decided that they were going to unwind the DNA helix. They thought that the technology was good enough that they could do it. It was a monumental undertaking, but they decided that they could do it. So dozens of labs, hundreds of scientists, thousands of technicians labored for 13 years. And finally in 2003, science gave to the world the first map ever of the human DNA helix. 3,000 base pairs at about a buck each. 13 years, thousands of people, three billion bucks. In 2012, nine years later, a commercial DNA chip was released for about a thousand dollars that will sequence the whole DNA in about two hours. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm seeing a trend here. And the trend is probably what? Seconds? Pennies? Fabulous technology. Fabulous. But more important than the technology by far are the creative applications of it. Doug Brown told you that very eloquently. It's about creativity. One of the pioneers of the Internet said it very well many years ago. The Internet was far easier to invent than it has been to forecast. What started as a way for scientists and Defense Department people to communicate with each other better has evolved into a platform that the world uses to do everything from what? Book a reservation and get directions to hooking up on Saturday night. Okay, okay. Yeah. In forecasting, we call it, though, ladies and gentlemen, to be creative. We call it the theory of the long nose. Despite what your mother told you, you need to stick your nose in other people's businesses <laughs> and their processes and their organizations and find out what they're doing and see if it applies to you or what you're doing can apply to them. The theory of the long nose. So if DNA is pennies and instant, what would we do with it? Health care, for sure. Suddenly everything that we see on TV about solving crimes is no longer fiction but a reality. And how about this? The most complex set of chemicals that we put in our body every day we collectively call food. But your DNA is a little bit different than yours. And even if you're identical twins, it's still slightly different. And as you age, it gets a little further apart. And all we can do right now in science about food is to give you some, the best we've got is there's good cholesterol, there's bad cholesterol. But if I've got your DNA, then I can say, no, that bad cholesterol for you, it's okay. What would you do with it? Let's start applying it. It's phenomenal. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, these things used to be connected by wires. <laughs> we called them telephones. And then somebody said, uh, why don't we make it wireless? <laughs> and then somebody said, well, if you're going to carry it around, let's make it do something more. And today, 85% of its use is for something other than voice. In fact, what used to be about voice is now silent, as we all text each other <laughs> while we're sitting next to each other. <laughs> huh. And then somebody said, well, it's put a camera on it. And in 2004, somebody did. Since 2004, the average number of photographs that the average American takes has gone up tenfold. We have no idea where they are, but we've got <laughs> ten times more photos. Okay, 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 okay. And then somebody said, let's replace this camera lens with a software lens so it can pick up pattern of light and dark. And then we can do an instant blood test. And then somebody said, let's replace it with a molecular lens. And then we would put an ear infrared 
laser in it and I could look at this blemish on my arm and that molecular camera would tell me whether it's benign or cancerous. Let's talk. <laughs> no. Let's have mobile diagnostic medicine. And then somebody said, you know, why do we smear ink all over everything? Why don't we apply ink molecule by molecule? Hmm. Laser jet printing changed the world. And then somebody said, well, if I can put down a molecule of ink, why can't I put down a molecule of a polymer, another plastic, a metal, a nano molecule. And if I did that, then I could build things up, assembled manufacturing, 3D manufacturing. And with something the size of a bread box, anybody in the world can essentially manufacture anything, anywhere. That just changed the middle class. Don't believe it? Right here in Albuquerque, Optomec is doing it today. <gasps> Fabulous. But then somebody said, instead of ink, let's make it virtual ink. And then... Everybody, everywhere in the world, will have all of the knowledge of the world all the time. May we all have long knowledge.